Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Sorry about that failed live stream. I don't know. I, uh, you know, it was, it worked the other night out here in the garage without any interruption, but apparently a charter decided to, I don't know, the bandwidth fluctuated or something. I don't know, maybe the kids were streaming too much crap in the house. Anyhow, we'll do this the old-fashioned way. I want to take a look. Henry's Mac 130. Uh, he's been fighting this one somewhat extensively. <clears throat> oh, okay. So this is the fuel hose that he took out of it. And I can see why that wouldn't flow any fuel. It was kinked in half and about ready to break. But apparently this thing just won't draw fuel. So we're going to get into it and we're trying to figure out why. First, before we do that, I want to get at least the chain brake cover off. Get that the hell out of our way so we don't have to work around it. There we go. Okay. This is a really clean saw. I mean, there's not even any scratches on that cover. <laughs> I'm not going to put it on the bench and let it rattle around. I mean, other than this new new air filter cover he bought from me, looks like this thing is bone stock original. Wow. That was a hell of a lot of compression. A whole hell of a lot of compression. Okay. So I know that he put a new new fuel filter in this thing. I can't see squat from up here. Let's go ahead and pull the tank off, or pull the cover off here and check everything out. Just kind of see what we can see. Kind of get a baseline for what it is we're working with here. The saws, again, I've I've done videos, several, of the, the pull-aparts, and they're not that bad once you get used to them. Again, they're not the easiest thing to work on, but they're no worse than my home light nemesis, the Super EZ. Okay. Let's go ahead and just pop this off. I don't see any fluid in the tank, so that'll be good. So, you guys see what I did there? It was a, I should have maybe explained that. See that tab right there? That's attached to the fuel line, and that has a barb on one end and a fitting with an O-ring on the other end. That, that slips into here. So with that tab locked into place, that snaps in. So when you're taking one off, if you just go under and just do a quick, you know, twist to your wrist it'll pop it off without breaking anything which is really what you should be aiming for is not breaking anything all right now I think I already know what was going on here and I don't think I can show you guys a good picture yet but the fuel hose you can see the fitting right there if you can see the green back in there, it looks pinched under the coil. There, there. I hope that there's enough light in there. I'll try to zoom that in as I process the video. The hose has to stay in that channel. If it gets off to the side like that, it pinches. So that's my guess is what happened here. So let's get her apart. And there's no, no way around it. There are certain things you got to take apart to get the engine out of the case. Ouch. Okay, how long is that screw? Besides, five miles long. Okay. Ooh, that is crunchy. Ooh. We'll try something. I keep my little fabulous container of brake fluid around. 
We'll see if the time it takes us to do this repair will allow it to sop up and maybe limber up a little bit on that seal. It's not the most critical thing on the planet, but it should work right. The other thing I'm noticing is that recoil spring has broken the end off. And that's not good. This thing's not going to last much longer. We're going to try to bend it back like the original one would have. Been shaped, but not, not going to get it all the way. Maybe not even going to get it half the way. But that is a, a break waiting, waiting to happen. Okay, that might be enough to get it. Another thing I'm noticing is the engine screw from in here is missing, and I don't think that's in the box, so... I'm going to go to put it back together. I'll have to see if I can dig through my parts bin and see what we can find. I do need to get the starter out of the way. This starter doesn't use any special washers. The, the holes are just drilled and it drops in and these screws go through it. Some of them, there's like a square square peg cast into the housing so the starter slides over that and then you've got a big kind of trapezoidal type washer that fits over it. All you gotta do is get it out of the way without letting the rope unwind itself. See, if it starts pulling back like that, that's where you can lose it, so you just gotta be careful. Get our choke knob out of the way. Co-op some space in there. You gotta get your spark plug out of the way. tight fit in there. Not a lot of room for fingers or tools or anything else. There's a brand new plug. That's good. Okay. So we've got this upper screw and I'm stubborn. A lot of guys are going to take the whole throttle handle off. I take as little stuff off as I possibly can. I don't want to take a bunch of extra stuff off. I want to save some time. Now, if you end up fighting it for more than you would spend to take everything off, that's different. This is not the case. I've got this almost perfected where I can work around the throttle trigger and get that screw out. And it just comes with practice. So there's only three. That one up there, that one down there, and the one that should have been in there. Then you've got to reach up in here and disconnect your throttle rod. There's my pointer tool. We'll use that. So there's the rod. It just clicks into there. So you've got to hold the trigger down, basically pull it up and out. And I do that with a pair of needle nose pliers. You heard that noise. Pull the trigger back, drop the rod down. You want to, if you're worried about it trying to move, you can rotate the flywheel so the magnets are there and it'll attract it over to the back of the flywheel. Not critical, not necessary, but you can do it if you're worried about it dropping out, which it, it can. So I've just lifted the spark plug wire, trying to loosen it up a little bit back here because that's a tight fit. There it goes. And out she goes. Now, what I'm interested in is what does that fuel hose look, look, look like? Alright, there's the problem. See that? She was pinched tighter than a drum. At least I'm going to assume. I mean, that just, it feels all the way collapsed. So I'm pretty sure that's all it was. Ooh. Another thunderstorm moving through. Very nice. 
We don't get those <clears throat> around here all that often, especially in the fall, but it's been kind of very mild. Well, I'm in a t-shirt today and plenty comfortable. I think the hose length was about right. I'm going to give it an extra half inch here. Just so that I got enough to work with, but you don't want it to be too long because it then can... It can bunch up and pinch. You know, I'm not... I'm not going to use that piece of hose I just cut. I was not thinking as I ran my mouth. I, on these saws, I prefer... This is 8th by 3 16 I prefer 8th by quarter on the Tigon, simply because it doesn't kink as easily. And it's about the same size in diameter as the original. So that's what we're going to use. And I hope I didn't cut that too short. Be close. Be damn close. I don't remember. I actually think the yeah, you want the fuel hose. If I remember right, the fuel hose should go on the inside of the spark plug lead. At least that's how we're going to do it. Alright, so however your hose lays, try to fit that barb so the retainers pop straight down. That'll just make it easier. And let's see if I've got my stuff together well enough. Now the risk I'm running here is that there's actually something wrong in the carburetor still, and I'm not going to see it. But we're going to attempt this because I know how much time was already spent on the carb, and I'm pretty sure, based on our conversations, that everything's all right there. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to get some more practice at pulling this thing out of the engine case. Again, I can't show that on screen or on the video because I can't see what I'm doing, let alone show you guys. But I've kept that hose in that channel all the way back. And now I've got to get the spark plug wire fished because that is what's jamming up the works right now. I'm basically just pulling that out. And you don't want to be like rougher than rough with it, but you don't have to be gentle like it's a delicate flower. It's not. Alright. I'm going to make my life a tiny bit. Now we'll see. I'll tempt fate. That's sitting in that housing so nicely. I'll try it. Sometimes these aren't sitting so nice and you need to start the other ones before this upper one will start without trying to cross thread. We'll see if I'm living good today. And it looks like I am. Which is good. That'll make up for some of the other stuff that hasn't gone right today. I mean, that live stream was a, a debacle from <laughs> me not having the mic on at the very beginning. The right mic. And then to that freeze-up, apparently due to bandwidth. That was a debacle, but really, I spent all the bloody morning on a Homelite 150. And I'm digging for some screws right now. My McCulloch stuff, I don't use much. So it's buried. Uh, worked on a Home Light 150 for entirely too freaking long this morning trying to get spark. And part of what ended up screwing me was my... Uh, my electronic ignition chip that I was using as a test... quite the right length. I was using as my tester also turned out to be bad. So that was kind of kind of crummy. I didn't like that. Set me back. I spent way more time getting the spark on that. But there were bad parts. I mean that's that's the long and the short of it. Okay. I think we're gonna go with that. Let's see if that drops in right. That should be the right thread size. Oh yeah. 
beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. You want to start all three before you tighten any one down. And this one up here. With the handle in place, you're not going to get any kind of a socket or ratchet on it, so as long as it's not rounded off, you can use your 5 16 box end wrench, and boom! You got an engine back in the housing. Put this stuff away. I am dancing over way too much uh, stuff in this garage at the moment. I need to box a couple saws up to send back to folks. I need to drain a couple that are in my collection and get them back up in the or get them into the attic and then fix a few. It's amazing. It just adds up. All right, so you don't want to forget your throttle rod. Now I kept that flywheel magnet roughly in the same spot, so it's still sitting here for me. Putting it back in a flat blade screwdriver works pretty good to click it down. Done. Pretty much like it. <sighs> we'll do our choke rod. And I'm going to leave the air filter and the cover off right now. I'm going to do a minimal amount of assembly in order to just do a test run. Let's go ahead and now that filter inst installation is textbook. They come square, and you got to jam them into a round hole. And then you can just see it sticking out the bottom of the tank there. Normally these don't go bad. I mean, if fuel caramelizes, and that's what this one did. If it caramelizes to the point that you can't pour fuel in the top of the tank and actually get it to come out the bottom, that's when you know it's screwed. And unfortunately, that's apparently the way this one was. So you want your oil hose pointed straight forward. Got to index into that hole the same time you're clicking it in. On the fuel side, it's not a big deal. You can watch that. Done. Done, done, done. You don't want to forget your manual oil pump rod. Lever, I guess, more technically. And we'll throw our cover back on the front here. Now this, okay, this little wing dingy sponge, felt, whatever you want to call it, is supposed to go under the housing. Getting it back in is about impossible. It sucks. And not having it bunch up at all. It's almost impossible to do. And that's why you hardly ever see them still on. But they're there to catch a little bit of fuel if you spill it. You know, so it doesn't turn your engine into a total greasy mess. In theory. Come on, baby. Just need to get you to start a little bit into that corner. See, I don't know how they did this from the factory. I really don't. But somehow they managed to get those to fit better than I've ever been able to. It always ends up bunching just a little bit. That doesn't look bad, though. I can live with that. That thread stripped. So it is. Okay, and well, that's gonna get. God, I hope these aren't metric already. That could be a pain in the ass. We'll cross that bridge later. I want to see if this thing runs now, or if I need to get back into it and dig into the old carburetor drop the starter on and give it a whirl. I suppose we probably ought to put a spark plug in it too, just for 
just for grins I hear on days that end in Y, you need a spark plug. Man, I wish that live stream had gone better. Because we'd be doing this on that. And honest, honestly, I'm trying to move some of this kind of kind of stuff that direction because I want it to be a little more instantaneous. The uh, processing it through a video editor allows me to add the little comments, the little text balloons if I've forgotten something. Hell, I can do a voice over. I don't do those much, but now that I've got a mic that's worth a damn, maybe I'll do it a little more, but it's nice to be able to just come out to the shop, fire that laptop up, run the, the webcam, and you need to let it rip. Alright. Let's throw some fuel in this bad boy and see what we have. I'm hoping we're going to have a running saw. Oop. Come on. These little filler necks are tiny. Okay, I'm not going any more than that because I don't want to. If it runs, we're not going to need to do much of a test run. At least we shouldn't. Okay. Alright. Again, this tight fit means you got to be careful as you're trying to start it so you don't end up with a cross thread. Check the carb settings. One, two, a little over one full turn. Probably about right. Good thunderstorms. I like it. Okay, cross your fingers. Use the throttle latch since it works. Starter rope is junk. I can't tell if it had tried to pull fuel or not. And it would have in the next two or three pulls if it was going to. personal quirks, and I recognize this fully, is I hate doing things twice on the same item. I could do 10 starter ropes a day on 10 different saws, or 10, you know, 10, 10 customer saws. Could be the same model, could be a Super 2, I don't care, whatever. But if I have to pull the same starter cover off of the same saw more than once in a day, it irritates me. So, just like if I've got to pull this thing back out of the engine case in order to get us running, that is going to irritate me. Straight up going to do it. So, I'm hoping that we're going to get somewhere right quick and in a hurry here. the home light 36 inch measurement and say that it's probably close enough. D 
definitely more than what it's what it had. That rope is kind of weird looking. It's real fibrous, almost like it's a. I don't know. Yeah, it pulled through that washer. That's what the problem. That's what cut it. I don't disagree with the washer idea. We're going to go with a smaller one. It doesn't cut into the rope. Or that the knot can't start pulling through. All right. Never smoked a day in my life. But I keep these damn lighters around for burning rope ends. Alright. I'm just going to go with a single knot. That should not pull through that washer. side. Alright, that's a bind. So we'll go back to there. You can feel the spring when it has nothing left to give. So you back it off. Just a bit. Okay. So that's going to take it up pretty well. That'll take it up perfectly. So, these things are a little quirky. What you've got to do, get that fed up through there and not lose it. So if you're smart, you'll prep it, your starter handle ahead of time. Since I'm not professing to be smart today, we'll do that and hope that little knot doesn't slip before I get this out of here. This one, that washer is about the same size, so we'll go ahead and we'll give it a double knot. Or at least my version of. There we go. Good thing I got another spool of that small rope on the way. And it's about cached. So, for the second time, let's go ahead and put the starter back on. That's why, back to the whole live streaming thing, that's why I'd like to start doing that more, is stuff like this. You know, when you've got something that's really well scripted, you know how it's going to begin, you know how it's going to end, you know what's going to happen, it works really well. You can make a concise, accurate video, present information, and get it done. And something like this that's a little more nebulous, Almost like follow along would be a better way to go. Alright, give it a few more cranks before trying to prime it and see what it does. That should have fired. I had a bad feeling about this. Hmm. 
there's definitely something wrong there. Further in. So you win some and you lose some. Sometimes you gamble that something's right and you win. Other times you don't. So it's definitely running lean. I've got those jets open way further than they need to be, almost twice what they need to be right now, at least on most saws that I come across. So a couple thoughts come to mind. We could have a metering lever or fuel inlet lever that's set a little too low. We could have a deposit of felt from that new filter. Occasionally those aftermarket felts do that. They'll shed. And then, incomprehensibly, they will plug up the screen in the carburetor and fuel won't flow through them. Even though they're a filter, somehow they manage to pull themselves tight enough that it won't let fuel through. So that's a possibility. I mean, I suppose there could be a torn carburetor gasket on the, the intake manifold there. Seen that before. Any number of things. The really great news is that'll give me more time to practice getting that that filter or the the fuel nut felt to slip into its place. Since that's exactly what I want more practice on. Oh, Nothing else has really gone smoothly today, so I don't know why I disillusioned myself into thinking that this would. It was a nice thought, but it did not happen. All right, now that we got fuel in the tank, we don't want to dilly dally around getting this off. Okay, see that? More than enough fuels flowing through there. That's not the problem. That filter is fine. It's in the curb or close by. drawing fuel because it would halfway run on its own those air bubbles are just from me taking it off I'm assuming so let's get coil out of the way here this is a later yeah, this is an electronic ignition module. So this is a later 130. I don't see too many of those. Okay, now there was a washer under there. The insulator's cracked out, but it doesn't seem to be hurting anything. insulators but they're not certainly not what's causing whatever we got going on all right we're gonna look real closely at all this as it comes off see what we got let's get that throttle rod that is a brand new gasket 
So that sure as heck ain't the problem. Okay. In a way, that's good. Look. We're, we're isolating. Whatever going on is in the carb, I would say. And I've griped about these before. This style of carburetor, you cannot test it as you're assembling it. You can only test it, pressure test it, when it's fully assembled. Kind of like the, the tilts and HLs. You take a big giant guess and hope that you got everything right. Then you pump it up and realize you didn't. In some cases. Okay, so let's look at this as it comes apart and see if we find anything. Ah, I already know what it is. Gaskets are reversed. The diaphragm needs to be against the aluminum block. It's not sequenced right though. That's the way it should be. That looks mo better. Except it's still not lining up, so it's... Come on, dipstick. Can you not use your brain? And yes, I'm referring to myself. Ah, there we go. That is the way it should be. So remember, diaphragms go against your aluminum block. Gasket goes against your circuit or spacer. This side is right. Gasket to the aluminum block, diaphragm above that. You just have to remember it. There's no magic fancy way to say it. You just got to remember what goes where. So, I'm going to put this back together. I am 100% certain that was the problem. And that plastic alignment peg is broken off. So we'll just make sure the screw holes line everything up well. And we will pressure test this, just for grins. But I am 100%. Yeah. I, she'll run right when we get it back together. That was the, the definite issue. Those flappers have got to be able to seal to the aluminum block. Otherwise the pump action just doesn't work right. I don't care, however you want it. Is it okay to just cook it in foil? Yeah. The other important occurrence this weekend is we are celebrating our oldest daughter's 10th birthday. And if somebody could tell me where in the hell 10 years went, I'd appreciate it. Because I can remember as clear as a bell the night she was born at 2.37 a.m. Bless her little heart. Walking up and down the, the hallway of that hospital with her all swaddled up so that her mom could get a couple hours of sleep. But somehow, on the 2nd, she will be 10. But since that's a Tuesday, we're going to celebrate today with a bunch of family. She'll probably end up having two or three different damn parties, a little twerp. Rock solid, baby. Rock stinking solid. I am going to guess that this will run like a scalded cat. Let me get it back together.
goodness. And that would be good because that would be another one I could get in the mail and send home. I get some foot space back in this garage. All right. Carefully feed these insulators. Uh, yeah, we should be able to get the coil on. I want to get that gasket aligned so it doesn't get damaged. There it goes. Those have seen better days, but they should still work. Like everything else, vintage. You don't want to replace something that you. Damn it! You don't have to. Because you probably are going to just continue having a hard time finding stuff. As long as the coil drops over. Come on, you. Let's not be a pain in my butt. There we go. How the hell ended up way over there? So I've seen many times where that gasket will slip as the guy's installing it and be off to the side over here, not catch it. And that'll run even less than, <laughs> than what this one was doing. Basically, it won't run at all. You might get it to accidentally fire for a quick second, and then it'll blow out real quick. Okay, let's get that one down. Rotate that wire over out of the way. Hold that nice visual gap that done it enough times to know about where it should be. That's perfect. Okay. Come on, you. That looks good. All right. Don't forget to put your throttle rod back on before you stuff this back in. You can get it to get in there when the engine's in the case, but let me assure you it is not any fun. I try to avoid that whenever possible. Okay, so here we are doing stuff over again. favorite thing. Okay, you get back in your little fuel hose channel. And don't piss me off. Okay. There. Ah! Dummy. Oh, dang it. Boot came off. that loose. That, that does have a little bit of wear. And warm over the years. A little bit brittle. Yeah, they don't normally go on that easy at all. All right.
nice to me twice in a row. Yes, you are. Very good. Be interested to see how long this video ends up being. Here it feels like we have to have burned an hour. I guess we'll find out. much of that in there as I can. Okay. I suppose... <laughs> deal with that right now. I'll delay getting a test run, but thank God it's not metric. Might as well just do this right. Okay. Well, that much fuel. Yep, that is good and stripped. Not cracked though, so that's that's a plus. What I do? Put away my drill bits. Let's see. from the right package this time. Fifteen. Sixty-four. I'm on you. Normally, I would have been quicker on the drilling that out, but I don't want to risk cracking that casting. That would not end well for anybody. side like that. Real simple. Didn't want to risk the chance of any of those metal shavings making it into that fuel fitting. 
Alright, where's my red? These threaded inserts, I like to put a little dab in there. I know some people don't. I do, it works for me. So that's what we're going to do. is to knock that tang off the end. It's pretty, they've got it set up so that tang is brittle and it'll pop off pretty easy. And if you don't break it off, it actually bends down and jams up the screw a little bit. And that's it. Right there. So, let's go ahead and get rid of our metal shavings. screwing around here and get a test run going. A test run that ends well. Much better. Starter bolts, and a choke rod, and a spark plug. And hopefully, we will hear this little devil run the way it's supposed to run. It's tempting to take this handle off to access these, but it's just more time. And I guess if you're just doing one saw and you don't have a time limit on it or anything else to do, it's okay. I like making my life as easy as possible. Set this. Okay. For the second time, keep your fingers crossed. Bloody hell. I have no idea why that did that. I don't even quite know what the hell it did.
one. Without question, fed up beyond all belief. What in the hell? What the? What the hell's in there? There could have possibly. What could have possibly jammed it? tell you, days like this make me want to hang this whole bloody mess up and say to heck with it. What in the... F Damn. Yeah, what? Uh, did you ever get a chance to text Stacy about tomorrow? No. That's... Uh-huh. Smooth move, Mr. Big Shot. Evidently, I didn't get one of those coil bolts tight. That's the coil legs dragging. like that. Play games this time. What the hell? Uh, maybe we will. Okay. That was definitely oh, those magnets dragging. I mean, I got him passed. Alright. There's no drag there, and those are as tight as I dare make them. Last time, I hope.
that was entirely too many tries to get that right. But it appears we're there. So, this thing's going to get the, the two days sitting around treatment. If it refires, it'll get drained, aired out, and sent home.